are Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network with you on this Tuesday. It's weird not having an Eagles game, right? You know, just, just, uh, we'd be in like looking ahead mode right now to whoever the next opponent is. But of course, the Eagles on a bye week this week after starting the season six and oh, just a crazy, crazy run. Hey, by the way, uh, Derek, a uh, little gun on one with, uh, with number 55, Brandon Graham, correct? Mute it, mute it, my friend. Yep, Sean. Brandon Graham coming up tonight. Gun on showing one. off, man. You're showing off, man. Yeah. Wrong again, D Gun. You wrong again. Yeah. Uh, he's moved. He's moved on from wrong again, D Gun, to now calling out one of our that- friends and colleagues, <laughs> yeah. who I won't name right now. Yeah. So I'm gonna. I can't wait to ask him about that. I'm like, dude. Yeah. Do you watch everything that happens in the media? Or who tells you all this information? He is oh, on. I always he, want to tell him. I'm telling you, he's amazing, isn't he? He's on everything. I'm, I'm telling you right now, he doesn't watch all of this stuff. He can't. You know, he's got three kids on two. I was trying to get him on last night. He goes, D-Gun, you know, on Tuesday nights, I take the kids to swim class. You know, so he's a consummate he's a consummate dad at home. Um, but I'm like, who tells you all this stuff? So I'm going to see if I can get him to, to okay. fess up okay. in terms of who's talking. So. Uh, yeah, so you got to check that out. That's going to be fun. Brandon's always the best, man. That's for sure. Um, all right, so a couple things. You know, when you have the bye week and you're not looking ahead, you kind of look back a little bit at what we've seen so far. And obviously, incredible start. 6-0, and only undefeated team in the NFL right now. Um, they've won in a lot of different ways for sure, which we'll get into in a second. But here's the question I have for you, and, and maybe it's an obvious one. Um, who would you guys say is the MVP through four, through six games? Hmm. Hurts. I mean, is it is hurts a lot though? I mean, is it is it that overwhelming? I think listen, so. to, listen to what the players are saying. When you hear the players talk, they talk like Jalen Hurts. You know, they have the attitude like Jalen Hurts. They have his demeanor as far as going out there, and the moment is never too big for him. So I, I'm gonna say hurts because he's been that consummate, uh, steady flow that this team has needed. How about you, Gunner? There's no question. It's hurts. Um, he has checked off every box that we questioned, not just us, but the media, not just locally and regionally, but nationally. Every box we had questioned uh, about him uh, leading up to the season, he has checked it off through six games significantly. He is a significant reason why this team is where it is right now, standing at 6-0. and um, Obviously, everything that he has done this offseason in terms of making himself a better professional quarterback has paid off. His study habits, um, his ability to read a defense, to audible at the line of scrimmage, to make all the throws, throws that we questioned in the past. He's done everything you could ask for. Um, You have to look beyond just terms of completion, percentage, yards. How is he running the offense? What is he doing to help keep the chains moving, to keep his team ahead of the curve instead of behind the curve? And he has done that consistently as well as anybody in the National Football League this year. Yes, anybody. And I'm talking about Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, mm-hmm. uh, Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady. You put them all in there. He has been as consistent, if not more consistent, than anybody else under center in the National Football League. Yeah, I mean, it is it is amazing, the growth. I mean, we knew the work ethic. To be able to put it all together is what we're seeing here. And – they are just so dangerous. Um, and that'll lead into one of the things we're going to do in a second, but they're just so dangerous in so many <clears> different ways. All right. All right. So let the, if the consensus is hurts. If you exclude hurts, that's where I think it gets really interesting. I, I yeah, would right. say, you know, I think there's a lot of different ways you could take this. I would probably lean slay. Um, but I think you can make a case for like four guys. You well, know? you know what? With me? Yeah. I would go TJ Edwards. I, he's the he's quarterback one. of that defense. Yep. Where he goes, that defense goes. He had a kind of shaky game against Arizona. The defense played shaky. When he's playing well in the middle of that defense, that defense is impeccable because yep. he's the he's the hammer that stops the run. Yep. He's the hammer that gets you know everything going up front as far as making big plays. T.J. Edwards is like the unsung hero. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, I would go T.J. Edwards after that. Great one. I would lean towards Bradbury. Um, I think Bradbury has been a pleasant surprise in the back end of that defense. Um, He's playing like he did in Carolina um, right now. His ability to go one-on-one, to break on the ball, to close on the ball, to cause disruption as he did with that deflection uh, that led to a pick. Um, I think think 
Bradbury has been more than the perfect complement to Darius Slay on the opposite side. That was a big hole before they brought him in. Sure was. He has been more. And they got him at a bargain basement price. So he's one of many on that team that's playing with that proverbial chip on his shoulder. Not so much the chip of, you know, I'll show you that I can still play, but the chip of, okay, um, I'm losing a year financially of significant gains. I'm going to make my money back and then some after this year, as well as playing at a Pro Bowl level right now. Yeah, I, great choice. Uh, both great choices for sure. I think what Bradbury makes you – like Steven Nelson was eh, but it really shows you how good Bradbury is. Like the upgrade at that position, man, has been enormous. The fact that sure. you can throw the he and slay at teams – is unbelievable. You you can you don't have to worry about singling those guys up even against the best receivers in the NFL. And very few teams have that luxury of being able to do that. And, and, and I was and I will say this about T.J. Edwards. Um, I love T.J. Edwards because you know, like I said, I watched his whole career at Wisconsin, and the one thing he did at Wisconsin was make plays. He was he's not a good cover guy. He's still not a good cover guy, but he's that thumper. He's that thumper you need to be that stopgap. The only thing is, you know, as, as Barrett says, uh, as T.J. Edwards goes, so does that defense. That, st- that defense, to me, as a whole, still does an inconsistent job when it comes to defending against the run. I think they give up too much real estate uh, in the running game. It hasn't been to the point where it's hurt them long-term in a game, but when you look at the wealth of talent, the rotation they have in the trenches at D-tackle, what they have on the edge, the overall speed at linebacker now, you have a pure uh, – you know, you have a – almost, a, I would say, a 90% improvement in the linebacking in terms of just individual talent. But yet I still think they give up too much chunks of real estate at too many inopportune times in games. Um, that's that's not taking away from what they have accomplished. I mean, they're the best takeaway defense in the National Football League. They have two corners that can shut down at any given moment. You have one of the better slot corners when he's healthy in Devontae Maddox. C.J. Gardner is still a work in prog- uh, uh, progress. Uh, because he's out, he's playing out of position. But as good as that defense is, I think that's the only f- only evident flaw right now. Well, other than the fact that Jonathan Gannon has to get off of this four man rush thing, you got to send extra people. I don't we, think the four man rush is doing the job, you know, in terms of putting a consistent pressure on a quarterback. Uh, Barrett, you know, I'll tell you what, we we never even mentioned Kobe Dean's name anymore. Yeah, and exactly. it's not a knock on the kid. No, it's not. But it just tells you how well the linebacking crew is playing because so yes. many people, myself included, were so excited when they drafted this guy. But he's yep. – and he look, it's good for him. He can learn and do his thing. But we don't even talk about him anymore. Exactly, exactly. And when you talk about, uh, you know, Slay and Bradbury and even Amante Maddox, they've hid the fact that we have two young safeties. Yes. Two very mm-hmm. young. One with inexperience in safety and one guy that was – a guy that just made his way up through the ranks, Marcus Epps. You know what I'm saying? Marcus yeah. Epps is playing at a high level because he can trust the guys around him. Uh, Garner Johnson is new guy in there, and he's playing at a high level because he can trust the guys around him. Mm-hmm. So, you know, those, especially Slay and Bradbury, gives you a great opportunity to run what you want to run and how you want to run it in that secondary because those two are so good. Yeah. Yeah. No, look, there's no question about it. It's a – it's nice to have players at, at multiple positions, man. Uh, you know, that's for sure. And a little later, we'll get into some of the concerns with the Eagles. All right. The question I have now is for you guys, what is exactly their identity? If you had to, if you had to say <clears throat> there, it could be either side of the ball, both, whatever they're this, they're that. What would you say they are? I would say they're opportunistic. Okay. They take advantage of situations that the offense puts them in. When the offense goes out there and plays at a high level and gets that team behind the buck, mm-hmm. that's when they turn it up. But when the game is even and on the line, I need to see more then from them being more of a dominant defense. So, you know, let's let's be – they're steady right now. They're steady. You know what I'm saying? They're steady. They're flowing. They're putting you in, in, in position to be successful. They're not going to lose the game for you. I'll, I'll put it like that. That's what I would say. How about you, Derek? Versatile would be the operative word for me. Mm. Um, they can change at any given moment and, and and make plays at any given moment in so many different ways uh, on both sides of the football. Um, the, the defense is the reason why they're number one in takeaways in the NFL. They make the necessary plays. It's not always pretty. 
but they get the necessary plays when they have to at any given moment. The offense can adjust at any given time. You want to try to take away a pass game, we'll, we'll, we'll slow you down with the run. You want to try to take away a running game, we'll chew you up with the pass. I think the versatility of this team on both sides of the football is quite evident, uh, more so than any other team in the National Football League right now. I would say, and it's similar to what you guys said, but I would say they're diverse. They're diverse because they can hurt you a lot of different ways. You know, everything you guys just said, I just, I look at the way the lay, they finished off the last two games with that, that power running game where they just said, you know what, we're going to run it down your throat. We're going to score and we're going to eat clock and make it really difficult for you to try to score and either, you know, take the lead or tie the game up in Arizona's case or with the, you know, the Dallas game, they, they made it a two possession game. Like I, I just think to have that in your bag, to just be able to go to is so big, but it's not to say that AJ Brown's not going to kill you in the air. Devontae's not going to kill you in the air. Goddard's not going to kill you in the air. You, you know, and you, by the way, on top of everything else, you have a really quality running back. You know, mm -hmm. Miles Sanders is really good. So you have a quality running back, two quality wideouts, a stud tight end, when healthy, arguably the best offensive line in the league. Not to mention a defense that takes the ball away better than any team in the NFL. Like, it's no coincidence they're they're the best team right now because every other team is more flawed right now than the Eagles. I think that when I, defensively, I would also add that sometimes I look at them as a chameleon. Sometimes they blend into the scenery. You know what, what the heck is the defense? You know they they keep have they have this this third quarter collapse sometimes where. You know, it's like they're playing out of character. And then all of a sudden they resurface in the fourth right. quarter again. Right. You know, so I, I would, I, I would, I was thinking about the word chameleon. That's not always the case the first two quarters because I think they play solid mm -hmm. across the board. They may, but all of a sudden they just disappear for a moment. Like they blend into, and, and, and you're wondering, what the heck is going on yeah, here? Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> No, listen, I agree. I, I, yeah, I, I, it's, they're almost like they become like camouflage for a minute. They're like, what is happening here? You know, where do they go? Where's this team I saw in the second quarter? Now, and that's part of what we'll we'll discuss with, you know, the things they need to get better at, that's for sure. But I think it's like anything else. You know, you have to fix some things. You got to get better at some things. It's not perfect. They haven't perfected it right now. And they realize that. And I think it's one of the things that, that Sirianni and the staff are going to hit really hard, you know, during this bye week. They're gonna, that's something they're going to dig in on. Yeah, and that's this that's what the bye week is about. Self-evaluation. What are we mm -hmm. doing right? What are we doing wrong? How can we make ourselves better? That's what you do during the you know, during the um during this bye week. Now I'll say this. They're six and oh, and they have they're not even close to scratching the surface on how good mm -hmm. they could be. Mm -hmm. Um, the mere fact that they've been able to adjust, go out there and and impose their will where they need to, uh, they're they're they have an identity, but they're still making an identity and building on that identity. That's why I say they leave, they leave, you know, a lot on the table. They leave a lot of money on the table. And that's scary when to, to think of they're not playing up to their full capability. That's why what is 112 or 122 points in the second quarter. Yeah. But you got like 17 in the first quarter. In the third. You got you yeah. know 17 in the third, 18 yeah. in the fourth. I mean, they have so much more improvement to come just in those three quarters that you know I I they haven't they haven't scratched the surface, man. The, the I mean, positives they has, are guy there. They only had they only had six yards of offense, six yards of offense in that third quarter. That's crazy. Which is like for an explosive team like this, and they had similar issues with uh, Arizona the week before. Part of that's on the defense uh -oh. too, because the, the defense yeah. isn't getting off the field. Not off the field, correct. Yeah. But my biggest concern is the special teams because this bye week, I don't think you can do anything to fix the special teams. You're not going to change the coordinator, who I don't think was ready for the job. Number one. Number two, you can tell they didn't put a lot of emphasis in terms of um, improving special teams personnel. You're not going to make wholesale changes to improve that. You're not going to change the coordinator. I think special teams is going to stay what it is at this point. We don't we, we don't have a legitimate returner right now. Covey is what he is. You know he's sure-handed in terms of securing the ball. He's not going to wow you with his ability to bring it back. Um, and I think that's 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 the only major concern right now. You always talk about championship teams play three phases of the game well. Well, right now you have two phases of the game that play it well. That third that third phase is not just a job; it's an adventure. Yeah, yeah. No, well said. I, well said, Derek. I, I don't think there's any question about that. The other thing that's that's really encouraging, if you look at their major moves in the off season, every guy is delivering. 
AJ Brown, right? Absolutely. Completely delivering. Kaiser White, completely delivering. Bradbury, completely delivering. Hassan Reddick. I mean, he's living up to what they're, what they're doing. You know, we, would you like to see the sacks? I don't mean just from him, but from everybody be a little bit more consistent each week. Sure. You know, yeah. Where it's not yeah. an explosion one week and then nothing yeah. one week, but really, I mean, for the most part, all the moves that they've made, uh, how again is, is like checking the boxes. He's having another monster off season. No question. Two in a row for him. You know, I mean, it's like, what is it? it it's almost like, um, I, I don't want to describe it. Um, it's like Camelot. Everything yes. has been perfect for Howie the last two years in terms of personnel. We, we've never had that luxury of saying that about Howie Roseman in terms of drafting players um, in previous years. But everything, and I think it goes back to, and, and somebody, and it's funny, my wife asked me about this this morning. She goes, why do you think Howie has improved so much? And, and for her to ask me that, she was asking me football questions, and one of them was, why do you think Howie has improved so much? And I think it goes back to when we had him on May, when he, he basically said in layman's terms, he learned his lesson. Right. He learned to listen to people more. You know, he didn't he didn't just block people out. You know, when you think of, and think about the volume of people they've lost over the last couple of years. Monster. Scouting the pos, the scouting, scouting department, yeah. front office personnel that have moved on to better jobs. Um, but yet people he's bringing in, he's listening to those people more. Hey, even li- hey. If you listen to your granddad, you you, you got to listen to everybody, right? <laughs> you yeah. listen to grandpa. Grandpa, tell you, man, you know, Go to why, SEC. Why, why is everybody else getting SEC players but you? Get those Saban. Get, get the guys who play for Saban and the guys who yeah. play for uh, the Bulldogs. In Georgia. And, yeah, exactly. And, and all those play, and, yeah. You know, your life will be a little bit easier. You start yeah. dipping, in, dipping into the South you know, a little bit. Down there. And, then yeah. when, and when the owner whispers in your ear, you know, uh, you think you should be looking at some of those SEC players a little bit more? Yeah. When your boss gently whispers in your ear like that, you, better you know, listen. it's like that. It's like that old E.F. Hutton commercial. Yeah. When, when Jeffrey Lurie talks, you better listen. Well, I, 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 I thought it was fast. Go back to even. I know we're going back a ways now, but when when, you know, when he got pushed aside for Chip, right. one of the things he did that offseason was or that when he was pushed aside, it wasn't just offseason, but he went and observed other organizations in yes. other sports yep. and he went looked at you know, soccer like he he went all over the place like across the globe just to try to glean and learn a little bit which i thought was really interesting um it wasn't just football teams or 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 successful gms or whatever it was all over the baseball basketball whatever and i think getting a different perspective you guys know sometimes when you can you get for a second step away from something it looks totally different than when you're in the middle of, like you're just like dodging bullets yeah. in the middle of things and i think maybe that helped him a lot to to Except what others are saying. Um, it, and it also says a lot about Jeffrey Lurie's trust in him. Yeah. When you have been as up and down as he had been, um, you know, in a lot of ways, he's lucky to still be here. You know, the owner allowed a coach, a coach who had never coached at the pro level to come in here and ba- basically push him aside. Right. Uh, basically, he took the coach's side more so than a guy who had been a longtime employee here who had been one of his top soldiers for a long time here. And you basically pushed him aside and gave this coach carte blanche, a coach who was, who basically took over a four win team, got you to the playoffs. And basically you got caught up in that and said, you know what? I, I got to listen to, to, to chip more than I got to listen to Howie, you know, and on Howie's part, Howie could have taken that personally and said, you know what? I'm out. I'm going somewhere else mm-hmm. where I feel appreciated. But the two state, you know, and it's like a marriage made, you know, as a match made in heaven right now in terms of how things have turned around for this organization. It is. And it, it, I don't know if I can you guys recall a, a front office? I mean, like you're the, like the chief, the guy who's really in charge, you know, excluding Jeffrey Lurie, but the guy who runs the whole thing being shoved aside, staying with the organization, uh-huh. then being reinstated a year later. Yeah. And then they and then two years later, they win a Super Bowl. And now they're on this run. Right. I, is there another? No, that's not Can't like this. Can't but we got to look at it from no. this standpoint. Yes, he got pushed away, put back to the back room, and was relegated to you know buying supplies and everything. But still, didn't <laughs> change. Supplies. Still making. I, lo- I love he, the buying supplies. Right. Yeah. But he was still making over a million dollars a year. Yeah. No. Oh, he yeah. wasn't. Not, you know. Oh, he wasn't. Yeah. He wasn't, they weren't, they weren't and, holding beer, right, beer fundraisers right, for him. Right, I mean, right. And, and, he, and he was still he was still working the cap. 
Yes. You know, he's you know, he's one of the best. He learned his lesson well under Joe Banner. No he was question. still working the cap. Yeah. Yep. Um his while his role may have been reduced on the surface, he was still making significant input into the structure of the team. Um so all of his power was not taken away, but it, right. in some it was embarrassing. It, it would have had to have been embarrassing for him to have been relegated to the role he was reduced to during that time. Well, think about it. Like the guy that you, I know Jeffrey Lurie obviously pushed hard for him too, but, but, but how he wanted him as the coach, the guy who you wanted as a coach, then sort of just like, you know, it dethrones you and you're sort of like, what just happened? And, and he's also, how he's also a guy who didn't want to just be known as a capologist. Right. He wanted to be known as a football right. man and right. his football man. Part of that was sort of stripped away and by the guy that he hired, like that's, that's a lot to swallow, man. And, you know, and it's a lot to deal with and to be able to come back out of it. I, I do think you make a good point, Derek. The fact that he stuck around and, and Barrett, you're right too. It's not like he wasn't getting paid, but he, he certainly could have jumped ship and gone somewhere else just to say, I, I, I'm still that guy. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. The money thing, I get a kick out. It's kind of like James Harden. Like people are, are like, oh my God, James Harden should be you know, for sainthood. James Harden's making like thirty-five million this year. Exactly. <laughs> we act like exactly. You yeah. know, okay, he's like the max. Two million dollar uh, um, pay cut. That's it. Yeah. He, no. He's, you know. Oh, he had to make thirty-five instead of forty-three million dollars. To the million point dollars. where oh. on a yacht throwing trophies in, in, into the sea. Like I think you know, I think I'm, James is okay. I, I if we're really worried about it, but uh, yeah, not, not to get off track, but yeah, I I, I think the it, it is remarkable the run that they're on. The last two drafts, I mean, you know, you end up with Devontae Smith and. And Landon Dickerson and Gainwell and Milton Milton Williams. And then this year, it's sort of a looking ahead a little bit approach with Jordan Davis and Cam Jurgens and Nicobe Dean. But nonetheless, they all look like they're they already have either established themselves as players or they're going to be players. They don't look like and, projects by any And story. one of the premier defensive players in college football last year is relegated to special teams. They tell you how they tell you uh, how much depth they have on this team right now. That that guy can't even get on the field. He's playing maybe 15, 20 snaps a game on special teams. Yeah, that's not bad. That's not no. bad when you have that luxury. No, it's good. So that and that's you know again, these are all the reasons why you add it up. Oh, and, and I did I mention that the uh, the streak of player of the weeks is done. It didn't happen this week. We thought. Oh man, we thought C.J. Gardner Johnson with his two interceptions might get it. Nobody. First time all NFL season, they don't have somebody on e either special teams, defense, or offense that won the uh, the player of the week. So let's they were bamboozled, hoodwinked. Yeah. It's not right. It's not right, man. It is not right. Yeah. So uh, look, things are good. They're off. They get Pittsburgh next. Pittsburgh's in a in a weird spot right now. They did beat the Bucks. Pickett gets hurt. He gets a concussion. He's in concussion protocol. Trubisky comes in. They're still pretty banged up. Pittsburgh. You know, things are still looking very favorable schedule wise for the Eagles. Um, and and to get an off week now, especially with Lane Johnson banged up, the timing was pretty decent. You'd rather would you rather have it maybe like week 10? Yeah, I mean, sure. I, I think you might. But you know, to be in the position that they're in, I think is pretty good to be able to lick your wounds a little bit and just rest up and you know, and, and look, Nick Sirianni is not a guy who's going to be resting on his laurels. You know, they're going to be in there busting the rear end, trying to figure this thing out and get everything uh, a little bit better than it was. All right. So let's get a timeout. We're going to come back. Sixers open last night. They dropped the game to the Celtics, 126, 117. We will talk to Derek Bodner, who does an amazing job covering the team when we come back. Barrett Brooks, Derek Gunn, Rob Ellis. We're Sports Take, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. Let's talk about Pro Action Restoration. In fact, Pro Action Restoration, the crew, Mike and the entire crew, are still down there in Florida helping people out after everything that went down with Hurricane Ian. That's just who they are. That's how they roll. And they've been down there for a long time, and they'll be down there for a while longer as well. But present day here, in, you know, wherever you're at, if you have a home or a business that experienced pain, and the and the just inconvenience of water, fire, smoke, mold damage, whatever. If you've gone through it, ProAction is on call 24 hours, seven, a week, seven days a week to assist you. I've gone through it. I had water damage at my parents' house. ProAction got over there. They cleaned it up very quickly. The crew was professional, clean. The price was reasonable. On top of that, they are licensed, bonded, fully insured, and serving the tri-state area for more than two decades. ProAction will work in conjunction with your insurance company. So, it could be any of these, water, fire, smoke, 
mold damage, mold remediation, whatever you need, they can handle it and they can help you. And if you're not really sure if you have something else going on, just reach out and give them a call. 610-623-3760, 610-623-3760, or online at ProActionRestoration.com. That's ProActionRestoration.com. Go to get your game on. 